uh, this is that field, this is in bright field, uh, and uh, this process is sped up about 400 times less, probably more actually. Um, and this is what happens when the sample is exposed to the colloidal gold. Wow. Pretty cool. Wow. Wow. So, the really, really awesome thing about this is this is exposure at a distance. What so do you the colloidal gold, the colloidal gold didn't actually come into contact with the sample. You serious? Why would, okay, say. I have a question. Why would colloidal gold be working like this? I obviously know very little about it. Why would it be working well, this effectively? <laughs> yeah, um, it is, yeah, I don't know the answers to that question. I know that um, colloidal gold carries an electric charge. We make it with the process of electrolysis. It can be made in the home. I certainly would envisage it. We um, decentralize the production of colloidal gold and have it appear at every market, Saturday market and every Wednesday market in the country. Um, but it carries an electric charge and it's able to act at this tech at a distance. Wow, it's that's really astounding. We're, we're only talking in millimeter and with some of these experiments, I included an air gap as well. Um, so, so that drop went from that to that. Wow. Within about, within about two hours. Without touching the sample. So if I'd actually ran the drop into the sample, you wouldn't, it would have, it would have wiped out everything. You wouldn't have seen anything. Have you got, uh, test results, Dr. Nixon, from your patients that you're able to share anonymously, uh, with us to show the results or is that still coming? That's most of that's still coming. Sure. I'm actually I'm suspended from clinical practice at the moment, but I'm allowed to do research. So I'm doing some research on this. So yeah. um, I'll let you know. But I do have one patient who's keen to let everybody know about his experiences. So I'll let you know about Patrick at the end. Yes, um, wonderful. So so Matt and I had a good time blowing things up. So he, he's a typical rocket engineer, he likes blowing things up. So this video is really interesting from the point of view of, of this, this um, structure here, which is actually incorporated inside the larger structure and exits the larger structure. So, you know, clearly this is not um, a natural process. Yes, you can see them exiting. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's tricky, isn't it? So, in these these structures here, when when the structures are not in an electric field or magnetic field or a field of some sort, they're not round like this. So this round, tight spherical structure is what I see when the when these when the matrix is in an electric field. Uh, this is another one. This is a small chip with quite a lot going on. This is probably running a little bit fast, so I'll stop it halfway through. So what, what I've done here is I've put the colloidal gold uh, away from the sample. It's probably separated by uh, a few millimeters. Right. And whilst the colloidal gold is in solution, the structure gets smaller. When the colloidal gold dries out, which is about here, it starts getting bigger again. But it, right. it doesn't form it doesn't form the same structure. 